Welcome to another session of spectroscopy. In this session, we'll understand about the factors affecting UV visible absorption spectroscopy. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe so that you don't miss such informative videos. Drop in your comments and tap the like button if you like the video after watching. At the end of the session, you'll be able to elucidate the bathochromic shift, hypsochromic shift, hyperchromic effect and hypochromic effect and factors affecting the chromic shifts that is effect of conjugation, steric hindrance, solvent, pH, etc. Let us understand the principle behind UV visible spectroscopy. When UV or visible light passes through the compound with multiple bonds, the valence electrons undergoes transition from the lower to higher energy level and gives rise to UV visible spectroscopy. We will see how the molecular orbitals form from the atomic orbitals. When two atomic orbitals combine, it forms two molecular orbitals, one with a lower energy called bonding orbital and the other with the higher energy called antibonding orbital. I have shown both sigma and pi bond. We have another orbital called as non-bonding orbital which occurs when lone pair of electrons are present in heteroatoms such as oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, etc. We have the different energy levels of the molecule, uh, molecular orbital shown here. If you haven't watched the previous video, I have explained the different types of chromic shifts with the example and also these transitions in detail. Please do watch the link is above and we see that different types of transition occurs and out of which sigma to sigma star requires the highest energy and n to pi star requires the lowest energy and when we have a compound we can look at the bond and tell what type of transition it occurs. We will understand about the different types of chromic shifts that is effect of substituents that is when an oxochrome is present along with the chromophore what will happen. This is the absorption spectra of UV visible spectroscopy and epsilon max is in the y axis and wavelength is in the y, uh, x axis. When the absorption band shifts to the longer wavelength we call it as a bathochromic shift or red shift. When it shifts to the shorter wavelength we call it as hypsochromic shift or blue shift. When the intensity of this band increases, we call it as hyperchromic effect. When it decreases, we call it as hypochromic effect. Usually, bathochromic shift is accompanied by hypochromic effect and hypochromic effect is accompanied along with hypsochromic shift. We look into the factors affecting absorption spectra. First and foremost important factor is the effect of conjugation in alkenes. We see that when a single double bond is present, we have two molecular orbitals that is one is bonding orbital and the other one is antibonding orbitals and we have a transition that is pi to pi star transition. But when we have two double bonds, we see that we have two bonding orbitals and two antibonding orbitals and the transition takes place from HOMO that is highest occupied molecular orbital to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital and we see that the energy gap has reduced compared to the compound which had one double bond. And when we have three double bonds, we see that we have three bonding orbitals and three antibonding orbitals and the distance between the HOMO and LUMO has further reduced. That means the energy gap has decreased. Energy is inversely proportional to the wavelength. So when the energy gap decreases, the wavelength increases. So the absorption spectra moves to the longer wavelength and it undergoes bathochromic shift accompanied by hypochromic effect. That is the lambda max value also increases and epsilon max value also increases. And we look into the effect of steric hindrance. We have taken the example of still beam. In trans still beam, we see that the coplanarity and the pi system is achieved very easily. But in cis still beam, the two bulky groups are placed on one side of the double bond and this way the planar structure is distorted. So the shift is towards the shorter wavelength. So we have a lower lambda max and lower epsilon max. So it undergoes both hypsochromic shift and hypochromic effect. That is the lambda max value also decreases and epsilon max value also decreases. The examples you can see in the previous session also. Effect of solvent. Here the polar solvents that is we don't have any impact due to the non-polar solvents. Non-polar solvents do not interact with the solute molecules at all. 
highly pure non polar solvents but if you have polar solvents such as water or alcohol it forms an hydrogen bond with the polar molecules so you may have shifts in the absorption band it also may stabilize or destabilize the molecular orbital that is it changes the energy level of the ground state or the excited state of the molecule this also alters the energy gap let us see with an example we'll see the effect of polar solvent in pi to pi star transition in pi to pi star transition dipole dipole interaction reduces the energy of the excited molecule uh, excited orbital you can see that the excited state's energy has reduced much compared to the ground state although both decreases the excited state orbital's energy has reduced much compared to this the ground state so with this what is happening is the energy gap between this ground state and excited state decreases and the energy required is less that means it shifts to the longer wavelength that is it undergoes bathochromic shift accompanied by hyperchromic effect that is lambda max as well as epsilon max value increases but it's just opposite with n to pi star transition that is polar solvents form hydrogen bond with the ground state here ground state is n not pi because i am considering n to pi star and it because of this hydrogen bond the energy of the n orbital reduces much compared to this pi star orbital so ultimately the n the gap between the n and pi star increases that is the energy gap increases so it shifts to the shorter wavelength so it undergoes hypsochromic shift accompanied by hypochromic effect that is both the lambda max value and the epsilon max value decreases lastly effect of ph of the sample solution so we have taken the example of phenol phenol normally it's acidic in nature so in acidic or neutral medium nothing happens but when a base is introduced it forms a phenoxide anion and the lone pair of electrons on oxygen delocalizes the pi system of the aromatic ring so the conjugation increases and decreases the energy gap as we have seen in the previous slide so it leads to bathochromic shift accompanied by hypochromic effect but see this example aniline is normally basic in nature so in basic medium and neutral medium the lone pair of electrons on nitrogen delocalizes the pi system of the aromatic ring but when it becomes acidic in nature when acid is introduced it becomes protonated and it disturbs the conjugation and leads to increase in the energy gap so it will lead to hypsochromic shift that is it moves to the shorter wavelength or decrease in intensity that is hypochromic effect both hypsochromic and hypochromic that is lambda max value and epsilon max value decreases so this is all for the session let us meet in another session until then bye bye please do subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and drop in your comments and tap the like button if you like the video bye bye thank you